One event that has shut up the temperature of activities in Nigeria's political space recently is the National Convention of the People's Democratic Party PDP, which came to a successful conclusion on Sunday, the 7th of October 2018, after close to 72 hours of unprecedented horse trading, where the 12 political gladiators jostling to fly the flag of the PDP in the 2019 presidential election were at their wits' best to woo the delegates to their side. Of course, the National Convention of the Party, which is an elective one, which will culminate in the emergence of a presidential flag bearer, is an important step in the plan of the PDP to return to the center state of governance of the country, a golden opportunity the party lost in 2015 to the ruling All Progressives Congress APC after 16 years in broken hold on power. Realizing the importance of the all-decisive matter at hand, the National Working Committee of the PDP, led by the hard-working chairman of the party, Prince Uche Secundus, quickly put in place the Convention Planning Committee, which had time-tested and trusted hands in such events like Governor Ifayo Koa of Delta State, who is the chairman, and the Boyin State Governor, Engineer Devu Mahi, who is the Secretary of the Convention Planning Committee. Port Harcourt, capital of River State, the treasure base of the nation in the south-south and Niger Delta region of the country, a stronghold of the People's Democratic Party, which has always delivered a heavy chunk of the votes of the PDP, especially in the presidential, governorship and other elections, rose up stoutly and acquitted itself creditably as a worthy host of the PDP's elective convention. Port Harcourt River State as host of the convention as against Abuja, the federal capital, which has always hosted such events, which did not get the immediate buy-in of all the contestants for the presidential ticket, and some stakeholders of the PDP, ended up being the saving grace of what would have amounted to massive logistic breakdown if the PDP and APC had their conventions on the same day. In the end, Governor Isam Wiki of River State, who propelled the entire state to give the PDP members, numbering 3,619, who were delegates to the convention, a very memorable time, should be commended for some sort of foresight and adequate preparation. Of course, there is no gain saying the fact that the economy of River State would have received a big boost in the last week. A direct fallout of this great political development. The Adokia Miesimaka Stadium, Port Harcourt River State, was a beehive of political activities on Saturday, the 6th of October 2018, as PDP faithful from the 36 states and the FCT converged in their hundreds in high spirits to choose their most favored candidate among the 12 on the ballot. The former president of Nigeria, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, his former deputy, architect Mohamed Namadi Sambo, joined the 12 aspirants, PDP National Chairman Prince Uche Sekundos, Governor Yesum Wike, and members of the Working Committee of the PDP at the PDP National Convention, which has been tagged a make-or-break event in some quarters. While welcoming the delegates to the PDP elective National Convention, Prince Uche Sekundos admonished them to be guided by their conscience to vote the one among the 12 contestants who has the capacity to lead the PDP back to the governance of Nigeria. He then wished their aspirants the very best of luck. Our defeat in 2015 enhanced and entrenched our democratic credential as a party of Democrats. It is also humble us and renewed our zeal to rebuild our umbrella of inclusion and hope. On December 11, 2017, in my sentence speech, after you graciously elected the current National Working Committee, I solemnly promised, and I quote, that all necessary steps will be taken to avoid a repeat of our past mistakes. Indeed, we have learned our lessons, and by this convention, 
we are now set to forge a new path for our great party and Nigeria, unquote. Exactly 10 months after that pledge, I can with gratitude to God and utmost humility report to you that the PDP of today is improved, enhanced, and has migrated from an opposition party to a ruling party in waiting. Our reform package and agenda anchored on the three pillars of rebrand, reposition to regain the three arrows has been very successful, with the first two almost accomplished, while the last regaining of power is also at the verge of being realized. In our methodical manner and consistent with our pledge, the PDP is now in control of the leadership in the National Assembly. An unprecedented feat in our country democratic experience. The Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives are here with us today. The governors of Benue, Sokoto, Kwara states are here with us today. Swelling the numbers of PDP controlled states, the setting up of a contact and integration committee led a party to the groundbreaking working partnership with 40 other political parties under the umbrella known as Coalition of United Political Party, CUPP. I'm happy to report to you that our reform process is on. It has yielded visible dividends. The reform will transform our party from a successful electoral vehicle to an agenda-shaping institution, ready to provide modern, inclusive, transparent governance fit for the 21st century. The chairman of the Convention Planning Committee, Governor Ifanyo Kowa of Delta State, addressed the convention where they spelt out the rules that all their aspirants must bear in mind. You have constituted as a party the National Convention Planning Committee under my leadership with my brother, the governor of Ebo State, as secretary. We thank you for the confidence and we believe that we have worked so hard in the last few days, even when we have also been busy in our various states, trying to ensure that we had huge free congresses at the various levels. We thank God that today we have been able to put up a process that we can say truly that we are proud of. We have had challenges along the line that we believe that the process we are going to deliver today is one that will be satisfactory to all, particularly our presidential aspirants. We have already finished the accreditation, and by the grace of God, the electoral process is going to be one that will be free, fair, transparent, and credible. We thank each and every one of you for coming to this convention. We are proud of our party. We are proud of our leaders. We are proud of the National Working Committee of the party and the Board of Trustees. And very importantly, we are proud of our leaders who are aspiring today to fly the flag of the party as a presidential candidate. We thank all of you for your cooperation. I want to formally welcome you to this convention, special convention in 2018 
to elect the presidential candidates of our dear Some leaders of the party also spoke at the convention in support of the earlier positions canvassed by the previous speakers. The BOT stands here to appeal to all of you that wherever it emerges, we all know that you know, power comes from God, authority comes from God. Wherever it emerges, just as you have agreed with uh, the National Working Committee of this party, that 11 of you will join hands and lead this party to victory in 2019. The bend of development of this country is leadership. Not even the challenge of infrastructure, not the bloodletting we are witnessing in different parts of northern Nigeria from Zamfara down to the Middle Belt states of Benue, Taraba, Plateau, and then Southern Kaduna, Adamawa, and the rest. And sundry acts of kidnappings across this country. Of course, we have the problem of infrastructure. Those of us delegates who traveled by road from our various states to Potaka for the purpose of this exercise would be an ample testimony to the fact that um, we are living in a country with decayed infrastructure. Obviously, these are challenges, but the biggest challenge of them all is leadership. When we have the right leadership, education will not be a problem. Infrastructure will not be a problem. Getting, inspiring our citizens to live in peace will not be a problem. So the biggest challenge is leadership. Your name is People's Democratic Party. You are Democrats. It is a party that laid the foundation for the fight against corruption in Nigeria. We enacted the EFCC Act, the ICPC, and other relevant acts for their fight against corruption. That is who you are. You led the revolution on telephone, especially the mobile telephone. It is your party, the PDP, that made Nigeria to be the fastest growing economy in Africa. That is who you are. So today, we are assembled to elect a presidential candidate that will lead us to the next election and be able to bring back Nigeria from those who are mismanaging it today. In this struggle and in this journey, we must not look back. Those who are coming back from the other political party, those who have been with us, they have equal access to the delegates. They will also be considered the equal footing. And whoever wins will lead us to the next election, which is in 2019, and be able to produce the next president of Nigeria. So, for those who have been with us in the party, we thank them. And those who returned, we are also grateful you have returned. To me, I'm so confused as to even the one to pick. Most of them have seen you privately, seen you in public, and they spoke to you today. One person also that knows the 12 persons very well is myself. I started interacting with most of them from 1998-99 till date. I've worked with all of them, I've known them left, right, and center. And I can say that they are all eminently qualified to rule this country. But among this pool of qualified gentlemen, we are going to select one based on some key criteria. And I always say that the greatest problem we face today in Nigeria is unity. People are beginning to ask themselves whether they belong to the country. We must select a leader, we must select the next president, a person 
that can bring Nigeria together. Let first have Nigeria, then others will follow. After that, all the aspirants had between three to five minutes to further sell their manifestos and programs with a view to making a last minute impression to sway the voters to their side. One after the other, starting with Alahaji Atiku Abubakar down the line, they mounted the sub box, so to speak, to do a final wrap up. Four years ago, the people of Nigeria voted for change. Today, they are not happy with the change they received. The economy has slowed and gone into recession and yet to recover, bringing hardship across Nigeria, increasing hunger and poverty, farmers struggle, businesses close, and jobs are lost. All the while, our government has become less transparent and deaf to the voices of Nigerians. It is time we get Nigeria working again. We need jobs, wealth creation for farmers and across the agricultural sector, along with security for every Nigerian so they may prosper as one and united people. As I'm looking the president of this country, I want to be a Nigerian president, not a regional president or religion president. I want the whole round during my campaign period. I decided to go by road to see things by myself before I reach there. I want whole south, south I want south south, south east. Southwest, all by road, and also the north, in order to see the problem that we are looking for. When you are talking of boosting economy, you can never boost economy without good roads. Therefore, I have seen it by myself. I don't need any senator or has a right to come and complain to me that he has problems in this area, more especially the south, south, the southeast. And even the south with the road, I have seen is just unbelievable. As a believer, power comes from God. God gives power to whoever he wishes, whenever he wishes. And I have committed that I have gone around this length and breadth of this, our great country. If the people of our great country today find me worthy, I say I should fly the flag under our party, I will accept it. However, if the people, the delegates in this convention decide that somebody is more competent than myself, I will follow the decision of this great government. My dear delegates, at this point in time, you do not have a boss. You do not have a godfather. You are our bosses, at least mine. The choice you are about to make here will make the difference between war and peace. It will make the difference between unity and disunity. The difference between order and chaos. The choice you make here and now will make the difference between progress and retrogression. I ask you, our delegates, I invite you to realize that 2019 general election is ours and ours for the taking, if only we will. As a military officer, I participated in the civil war to keep Nigeria one. I stood with Nadeko to restore democracy. 
I was in the G34, and we found that the, the great party today that is being celebrated not only in Nigeria, but in Africa. I'm therefore one of the founding fathers of this great party. I'm the longest serving governor in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having served three years as a military governor and eight years as an elected democratic governor of Plateau State, making a total of 11 years. So I'm highly experienced to lead the flag of the PDP for the 2019 election and bring the change that will change the change. Let me appeal to the delegates, especially when you come to cast your vote. Try as much as possible to vote for a candidate that will ensure the success of our party during the general election. Ensure you elect the delegates that have the capacity to run the government of this country. Because we have seen that one is very easy to get a ticket. Anybody can get a ticket here. But how do you ensure that that person wins an election? Very important. And another important area is running the government itself. Because we have seen the situation as it is today, that we have a government, people in government, that cannot run the government and that is why today we are in the problem of insecurity, we are in the problem of economy, we are in the problem of divisions among Christians and Muslims, division between ethnic groups. We have never seen it has never been this bad today in this country. I am in this race to ensure that we have a government that will bring everybody, Christians and Muslims, all ethnic groups, all those who supported the government, and will ensure that members of our party are placed in places where they should be. Fellow delegates, when you pick your ballot paper and you want the ballot board to thumbprint, you are going to engage two things, your conscience and your mind. If you follow your mind, then you know what I'm because others follow their minds. If you follow your conscience, then you stay and do the right thing. Do the wrong thing while in trouble. So I'm here because you and I are the same thing. I see my own reflection in you. You see mine in yours. You are my mirror. And we are mirror. A party bound by understanding, mutual respect, brotherhood, and sisterhood. A party with a firm commitment to the of Nigeria. A party with a very clear history of three former presidents, three former vice presidents, a number of governors, a number of senate presidents, senators. Members of the reps, council chairmen, assembly members, which means in the last 20 years, PDP captures Nigeria's history. What have we done wrong to run our failure? It's because we followed our minds, we refused to stand by our conscience. I ask you today that again, when you go there, there will be some kind of contradiction in your mind. What do you do? How do you vote? It's simple. If your mind, when you are voting, this is the bit. It means you are voting your mind, not your conscience. If you go in there feeling free, liberated, comfortable, then it means you are voting your conscience. And your conscience is my conscience. Therefore, I am the candidate. What will Nigerians stand to benefit 
if I happen to be nominated and elected. We all talk of restructuring. Restructuring is not a personal program of any member of PDP. It is an official program of the PDP. You recall when the then national chairman of APC on national network and a serving governor denied the need for restructuring. The very next day, I appeared on the same channel for an hour, defended why Nigeria should be restructured for the good of every Nigerian. And above that, myself and the working committee then addressed a world press conference to make it very, very clear that it is the policy of PDP that Nigeria be restructured for the good of all of us. Therefore, it's a party policy and every member will have to abide by that party policy. Beyond that, it is not that when you nominate me and I get elected, I promise this, I promise that. I was a governor in a very difficult state, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, very, very difficult. But we are able to govern well and bring everybody, irrespective of ethnic or religious background together, until the APC took over, that's when things started to go wrong. If given the opportunity to be the candidate of the party, I will have on top of my priority list the quick action to unite this country. Unite this country on ethnic lines, unite this country on religious lines, unite this country on political lines. The country has never been as divided as we are today. And therefore, unity will be my top priority. I am conscious of the fact that once there is unity, there will be peace. Peace based on equity, fairness, and justice. Lasting peace that will bring Nigeria together. I am also conscious of the fact that it is only in an enabling environment that our economy can thrive. And therefore, I will reorganize the security infrastructure. I will reappraise the security architecture to make sure that it can cope with the modern trend in insurgency. It can cope with the modern design that our kidnappers adopt. It can cope with armed robbery. It can cope with militancy. And it can cope with all unexpected and unforeseen security challenges. Today, this country is not only more divided. The poverty in the country does not know party does not know whether you are from the north, the south, the east or the west. does not know whether you are a Muslim or a Christian. There is poverty that we must put an end to. Today, there is need for inclusion. There is need for a sense of belonging. And to do that, my distinguished delegates, we must move away from the past. We cannot vote based on sentiment. We must vote for someone who is capable, has the ability and capacity to move this country forward. Today, if you are looking for a new Nigeria, led by new leadership, if you are looking for a 21st century leader, you will vote for me in the next few hours ahead. If you are looking for a courageous leader, that will stand for democracy, you will vote for me in the next few hours ahead. If you are looking to unite this country, you will work and work together and you vote for me in the next few hours. Nigeria today is searching for a leader that can unify this country. We are looking for a unifier, a leader that can be trusted by everybody 
and every section of this country. I am just 52 years old and I've had the privilege of being a member of the House of Representatives for 12 consecutive years from being a minority leader to Deputy Chief Whip and ultimately the Speaker of the House of Representatives at the Seventh Assembly. By the grace of God, I was able to preside over a house that was less rancorous, a house that was corrupt free, a house that worked for the unity of this country, for sustenance of democracy, promoting the rule of law, and engendering good governance. I believe also that power comes from God if for any reason I am not the one that should be the standard flag bearer of our party, I will work 100% with whoever emerges from this convention to ensure that we wrestle power and reposition Nigeria for a greater future. The future is now. Nigeria shall be great again. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we need a candidate that will stand on issues of integrity and credibility. And I have integrity and have credibility. We need a candidate that has character and have character. We need a candidate that has the political will and the capacity to take decisive decisions that will move this country forward. And I have that capacity. We need a candidate that will be able to build strong bridges of friendship across the virus divide. Because since the amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorate, Nigerians have never been so divided like we are today. Above all, we need a candidate that will be fair-minded. We need a candidate that will respect the rule of law. We need a candidate that will have the fear of God at heart. Because unless you have the fear of God at heart, you will not deal well to all manners of people without affection or ill will. Quickly, voting began in earnest with the agents of their parents taking positions at vantage areas to keep an eagle eye on the proceedings. Voting went on from about 9 p.m. on Saturday, October 6, 2018 till the morning of Sunday, the 7th of October. Sorting of the votes followed and then the actual counting of the votes cast. At the end of the counting of the votes, out of 3,619 delegates that voted, eight votes were declared void. The announcement of the results were made by Engineer Devu Mahi of Eboyin State and Governor Ifan Yokoa, Secretary and Chairman of the National Election Planning Committee. His Excellency Alaji Atiku Abubaka GCON scored 1,532 votes. I wish to, as returning officer at this national convention, to elect the presidential candidate of our great party. I wish to declare that Alaji. His Excellency Alaji Atiku Abubakar GCON is elected as the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the elections 2019. The final results of the PDP National Convention, which generated a lot of interest among Nigerians, especially pundits and the media, proved all the predictions of a tight race among some of those touted as top contenders in the race and the eventual winner wrong because former Vice President Atiku Abubakar indeed coasted home to what can be rightly termed a landslide victory with 1,532 votes. The closest president to Atiku Abubakar, Governor Tambual of Sokoto State, scored 693 votes. Senate President Bukola Saraki got 317 votes. Senator Musa Kwankwaso 
158 votes. Former Governor of Kaduna State and former Acting National Chairman of the PDP, Senator Ahmed Makarafi, pulled 74 votes. The re-emergence of Atiku Abubakar is a result of hard work, sleepless nights of combing the nooks and crannies of Nigeria, taking the articulated 2019 message with his personal touch. Let me also commend my fellow competitors or aspirants for displaying a sense of unity, a sense of purpose, and a sense of commitment. This is a very rare event. My fellow compatriots have really shown that the interest of the party and that of the people of this country is paramount and more important than our individual interests. I want to pay tribute to each and every one of them and to assure them that I am ever ready to work with each and every one of them for the realization of the victory of our party in the forthcoming elections. Thank a well-deserved presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Sir, as you said yourself, this has been a journey when you stayed on course. And today, you truly deserve this. On behalf of all of us, we congratulate you. You have said, it is not something you're going to do alone. Let me assure you, we are here. You just need to call us. Even if you don't call us, we are here to work with you to bring success to this country. Because we all know this is what Nigerians are yearning for. And what they've seen this afternoon, you can see truly that we are real committed. All the doubting Thomases that thought that all the aspirants would not be here, that some will walk out, this and that will happen. We're all here. We're not walking anywhere. We're only walking with you. We're only walking with you to victory. And on that note, let me, on behalf of the aspirants, to thank all the delegates, and particularly all our party, who, during the last few months, received all of us in their different states, this reception, the honor that you have given us to participate in this process. Participation in the process itself is an honor to be able to go around this country and meet people and serve. We always knew from day one that only one person will emerge. So today's event is not surprising. But what we have achieved individually and collectively in going around the country and meeting our people is a blessing and an honor for us. So once again, sir, on behalf of all the aspirants, we are with you, and I'm confident that with us as a team, May 29, 2019, the flags of red, white, and green will be in the middle as the new party, a party council to take over. Once again, sir, congratulations. In the final analysis, Atiku's extensive national and global contacts on common tenacity, consistent in understanding of Nigeria perfectly well, is a very strong convincing point as 2019 beckons. Also, it is gratifying to note that all those who contested with him have agreed to go along with him. We salute the Governor Benga Daniel-led Atiku campaign organization.